Thank you for the organizers for inviting me. I feel a little bit out of place. Uh, I'm kind of an intruder here because uh, I am uh, coming from an Eastern jurisdiction and um, I'm going to tell you about some uh, concepts of French law, of Quebec law, of Italian law. Um, second, I was initially a transactional lawyer for several years before turning to academia. So basically, I'm more keen to practical aspects of the, uh, of the issues at hand. And uh, third, I am an adept of legal realism and law and economics, which on the continent are not well seen. So I will try to uh, make exception to all these of my beliefs and to try to present you an as objective picture as possible to the Romanian process of uh, codification. And if my colleagues uh, speaking about the French code divided their roles in uh, bad cop and good cop, I remember, and uh, some of you might remember, that in the early days of the color TV, there was very important to look on the label to see the system the TV is uh, tuned to. And uh, there was a joke that the US system, the uh, NTSC was uh, coming from, was an acronym for never twice the same color. The French system, SECAM, was system entirely controlled uh, contrary to the American method. And finally, the German system, PAL, was not necessarily a picture always lousy, but, and I like this interpretation, peace at last. So I will try to have uh, a view that is um, not uh, dealing with uh, a lot of controversy, yet I will present you some sort of controversy. Therefore, I will focus basically on one trait of the Romanian Civil Code of 2011, namely the monistic approach it took to the uh, regulation. Uh, but now, just few bits of history. Uh, Professor Veres was kind enough yesterday to, to make uh, a contextual presentation, so only a few bits to add in order to explain my, uh, my point of view later on. Um, of course, there were some codification in the nowadays Romania in the 16th and 17th centuries, but they were merely collection of rules put together, most of them being of religious uh, importance. They were dealing more or less with how a good Christian uh, should, uh, uh, should behave. Um, then we had uh, the, uh, the two codes at the beginning of 19th century, one in the eastern part of current-day Romania in Moldavia, the Kalimach Code, which, as Emot uh, explained yesterday, was using an Austrian kind of uh, model, but with Greek terminology. Uh, in the southern part, there was the Karaja law, you can see from the name, the name of the Prince Karaja. It was also drafted during uh, uh, Greek Ottoman uh, uh, ruling of, uh, of, the, of the land. And it used a Greek model, but also some French influences. Uh, and then, all of a sudden, in 1865, long after the Napoleonic Wars, came the uh, civil code, which was entirely based on a, a Napoleon Code blueprint. And when I say Napoleon Code, I mean it, because I remember 25 years ago, I was a young lawyer. I was speaking at the phone with a French lawyer on a deal. And uh, I thought I, uh, I am a smart ass, and I 
told him. Uh, we will understand each other perfectly because we are using uh, the Napoleon code as well. And he said, oh yes, and it was about uh, some uh, penalty clause. And he said, then the judge can uh, uh, decrease the penalty established in the country. And I said, no, not at all, because the code says it cannot do. How? It can. We are looking at the same code? No. And I said, remember what I said initially, we have the Napoleon Code, the 1804 format, not your current format, which was amended over time, several times, added the case law of uh, Cour de Cassation, and so on. So um, this was the revolution. The revolution was back in 1865. Actually, it was adopted in 1864, entering into force 1st of January 1865. It's less important, this, this thing. And uh, legend says that it was drafted in a few months. In two or three months, it was drafted. Why? Because it was a translation of the French code with some bits of the Pisarelli uh, 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 Italian code uh, ideas, and with some uh, comments made by Marc at that time uh, that there are some flaws in the uh, Napoleonic uh, uh, code. Now, why French? We were at the end of the eastern end of Europe. Why looking to the French uh, for inspiring? Because at that time, the, the government was formed of people who were young people in 1848. They were revolutionaries coming on the revolutionary wave of 1848. By the way, that wave splashed in Romania. It was the eastern part the, that wave swept Europe through, um, which were political uh, prisoners at that time. But then 10 years, 15 years later, they came into power. And they were all trained in Paris. They were all students in Paris. So therefore, for them, France was the second country. For them, French was the second language. So they decided to take on France, and also there was a high esteem for Napoleon III, so they said we want to create something similar in here at the, um, uh, of the uh, end of the Danube, like it is on Seine. Um, the um, argument for the people was that, look, we are not so different from France. It was said Romania is the little France, and later on Bucharest is the little Paris. Of course, there were metaphors. Why? Because we are an agricultural country, they are an agricultural country back in the 1800s. So their code can be the same as our rules. It was none of this kind. The traditions, the legal traditions were all different. We were uh, developed in a uh, Byzantine tradition, while the French law was developed in a Western, uh, uh, ortho, uh, Western Christianity tradition, and uh, the Roman law had a, uh, a change in there, not to mention the Germanic uh, uh, usages. So uh, we just parachuted that code in the air, and we said it will be OK. And now what we, we do with it? First of all, we had a language problem. We had a language problem because at that time, Romanian legal concepts were most of them coming from Greek or Slavonic languages. So, for example, for the, uh, uh, the book on persons was named in the two codes, Kalimach and Karaja, respectively, uh, on faces or on cheeks, 
from prosopon, from the uh, Greek term. Now it was on persons. Nobody on the street knew what a person was at that time. So it was like this code needed to be translated to the Romanians. Even nowadays, maybe 75% of the legal terminology in Romanian is just the French words with a Romanian termination. So therefore, for Romanian students, it's very easy to read French legal books because in reading them, they understand most of the, at least the legal part, the legal concepts in, uh, in there. Um, after this code was uh, entered into force, at the end of the century, we adopted a commercial code, now taking the Italian uh, model of that, uh, of that time. It's logic. For the civilization, we look to the French. For business, we look to the Italians. We took the best from each of the uh, Latin uh, uh, nations at the time. Um, in the meantime, Romania became a kingdom. And later on, it obtained independence from the Turks, formal independence. Later on, it was transformed into a newer kingdom with a German king, with a German dynasty. So now the intellectuals came both from Paris and Berlin in terms of their academic studies. So there was a debate between the Francophiles and Germanophiles at that time. But over the time, the French uh, uh, guard uh, prevailed because they were more. It was uh, strength in numbers. Um, after the war, after the Second World War, of course, communism came into Romania. And in 1947, the uh, People's Republic, the Popular Republic was formed, but the civil code endured. And while there were some projects of changing it with a communist type of civil code, one of them in, uh, in the 70s was almost ready to enter into force, but at that time the relation between Romania and Russia were freezing and Legend says that uh, Ceausescu asked one of his counselors, should we adopt this code? And that guy said, you know, Mr. President, this is Russian inspired. I don't know if now is the time. OK, we'll not adopt it. So basically, we, have, we remained with the bourgeois civil code, French civil code, but of course, adapted to the new realities, for example, the, uh, 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 the good habits in the civil code were replaced with the socialist ethics. And the public order was also the socialist uh, uh, Marxist ideas. Uh, but otherwise, the text remained the same with one notable exception, the first book, the book on persons and on family which were repealed in uh, 1954 uh, by adoption of a new family code. Um, 1989, the, uh, the revolution, after it, the code remained in uh, place. And also, it happened something strange. While during the communist period, like in the Czech Republic, we had a code of, uh, uh, of contracts which applied between enterprises, uh, it was repealed in 1990. And all of a sudden, we discovered that nobody bothered to repeal, formally repeal the old commercial code. It was just not applied. And now, since it was never repealed, we took it back and we said it will apply as it was a new one. So basically, we had at the beginning of this uh, century 
two codes which were from the 19th century. This was the landscape where the discussion about a new civil code started. They started in 1996, 1997. A commission was formed. They worked until 2000. Uh, at the end of 2000, the government changed, so the work of the commission stopped. A project was published, but nothing happened. Then, between 2000 and 2004, uh, there were only few work done at the Ministry of Justice on, uh, on these projects. Uh, a new project was published in 2004, but also uh, with no effect. And then in 2005 to 2006, a new commission was formed. Most of the members were from the initial commission and uh, they put together a project which was uh, approved by the parliament in 2009. But the last text in, uh, in, this, uh, in this law said the entry into force of the Romanian Civil Code will be announced through the law for applying this code which is to be drafted. So, a new work started for the law for applying the code, which at the end emerged as a 300 articles law, um, oh, sorry, 230 articles law, um, which changed some of the text of the code as a, uh, following some uh, public uh, debates and also explain how the new code will enter into force on 1st of October 2011. Uh, some uh, 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 people uh, made jokes that this was the birthday of the informal head of the commission for drafting the code who was the Minister of Justice when the project started and therefore it was elected this date. Uh, he was saying, no, it's the beginning of the uh, academic year, so therefore we want uh, to, uh, for the students to have a new code and so on. Nobody knows what was the real uh, stuff. Uh, the idea is that um, uh, what is for sure is that um, the, uh, the new code um, was uh, drafted by legal scholars. It was uh, uh, drafted within the Minister of Justice, so within a medium of uh, legal people, but it should be addressed to citizens. So how it achieved this uh, translation is, uh, is a little bit um, uh, debatable right now. now if I am to, to put like a headline to, uh, to, to all this discussion, like breaking news, uh, the parliament gave green light to the acquisition of the two powerful second-hand codes from France by direct negotiation government to government. They shall be refurbished with the latest equipment via an offset program in Romania. This was the story of our initial civil code. You know, yesterday the government announced that they approved the acquisition of two submarines from the French government via G2G acquisition. Um, well, what were the, uh, the background for adoption of the new code? First of all, Romania was for more than 40 years on the wrong side of the Iron Cart. So uh, there were some ideology problems that had to be dealt with. Even if this space generally was initially uh, colonized by, by Greeks, so the, the Greek philosophy had an important influence on, uh, on the people in, uh, in ancient uh, times. It was then conquered by the Roman Empire. So Roman laws applied for several, uh, a couple of hundreds of years on the, uh, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, area. Um, 
as a matter of fact, the, um, uh, some of the uh, most used models of contracts were found in some mines in uh, central Transylvania written in Latin language and they are used by scholars in Roman law to explain how a loan agreement was drafted in the, uh, the post-classical period and so on. Um, the um, uh, problem here was that uh, legal theory and politics not match all the time or never match. So uh, even if we are part of the last wave of accession, and I'm saying wave meaning several countries, I know Croatia was uh, after us, this came with some, uh, with some prejudice. And uh, we see these prejudices nowadays when there is a big debate about what is called constitutional identity and we see Romanian Constitutional Court enter into debate with the Luxembourg Court uh, and they are quashing each other the decisions, which is a very interesting tennis uh, match. We have the political debate about uh, what should be uh, uh, the mechanism of rule of law and Schengen uh, admission. But one of the main ideas for the drafters of the Romanian Civil Code was that Civil Code should lay down the common law, the general law of, uh, for, the, for the people. And Article 2 of the, uh, of the uh, Civil Code, object and contents of the Civil Code, starts with the first paragraph the provisions of this code regulate the patrimonial and non-patrimonial relationship between persons as subject of civil law. And then, more importantly, the second paragraph states, this code consists of a set of rules that constitute common law for all fields referred to by the letter or the spirit of its legal provisions. So there is a clear statement that you will find the general rules in the civil code. And this will have a tremendous importance to the application of the uh, civil uh, code. Now, uh, the structure of the code is more or less similar with the French, with the old French uh, one, and, uh, but a little bit more detailed. And uh, it goes back to the digest and to the Gaius Instituciones, because what they were saying, both Gaius and Portalis, we need to have three major parts, on persons, on assets, and here is the small difference, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Romans said, and velacciones, on legal actions, Portalis said on the relation between, on rights between persons and uh, the, the persons have over their assets. Um, the um, uh, structure has general principles which comprises only 24 articles, so a very small part of general principles, then a book on subjects, natural persons and legal entities, a book on family, a book on goods, on assets, a book on inheritance, a book on contracts, which comprises 1,336 articles. So almost half of the code is devoted to contracts, both general theory of contract and special contracts and uh, security interests, and then a book on statutes of limitation and a book on conflict of laws. There was a big debate in a commission what parts of the general law should be included in the code. And the rule was the following. What is the part of the civil law that is less prone to modification? We'll take that part and we'll put it in the code because we don't want to change the code 
too, uh, uh, too much. Now, the idea of putting all relations in one code and repealing the commercial code created a split between civil law professors and commercial law professors, because commercial law professors thought we remain without our topic. None of this happened, but still the quarrel is on. Uh, why is this? Because under Article 3 of the new civil code, it said that the provisions of this code also apply to relationship between professionals as well as to relationship between them and any other subjects of civil law. Uh, it is what is called the monism of the civil code. Now, uh, in terms of consumer protection, the code took a very uh, careful approach. Under Article 1177, it is said that consumer contracts are subject to specific rules and in addition to the basic principles of this code. So basically, we didn't need to alter the, regula the consumer regulation because we didn't put the consumer regulation in the code. It's a separate set of, uh, of legislation. Now, the problem here is that the jurisdiction remains split. The judges continue to have uh, separate divisions in the court on civil law and on commercial law. Even if those, uh, those uh, chambers are now called the first civil chamber and the second civil chamber, they are not civil and commercial chamber, they are considering themselves as nothing has changed. And hence, we have a lot of decision of the high court which stresses that the cases should be uh, decided separately by different sections of the, uh, of the courts, even if we have one single uh, uh, code to apply to the different kind of, uh, uh, of decision. Uh, also, the idea of the spirit of the civil code endured, and we saw that the, both the regulation and the general decision of the high court said that civil law rules apply also in public law matters. For example, public law entities are regulated as a common law by the uh, law on subjects in the civil code and only for special things by the special legislation. That contracts with the state with the administration are still contracts, are still subject to the book on contracts as a general law. There was a lot of debate about the link with the criminal law. And uh, the debate is on and on, but the basic idea is that civil law still applies in criminal law in order to define the basis of the criminal uh, conduct. And um, what I saw over 12 years of application of this code was that generally the former commercial courts tend to have a uh, more um, efficiency uh, intended uh, approach, meaning that um, they, uh, they are generally tending to uh, to think fast, to decide on their hunch what the solution should be, and then to think how to motivate that solution, while the civil courts are trying to put everything in, uh, in a good rationale with all the concepts and, uh, uh, and uh, so on. And um, in order to, uh, to finish, the... Um, Baseline is that um, the fun if we think from the functional perspective, I think that the civil code is a success because it was integrated, it was adopted, it was adopted by the courts, I mean. Um, even the legal transplant, transplants were uh, most of the time understood and uh, accepted. And 
For example, in the past 12 years, there we saw little alterations to this code. I know it's early to discuss. I know there is a debate in the Romanian academia that we have kind of a moratorium, not to change things for a certain period of years until we make sure that the changes are really uh, necessary. But uh, the only changes that uh, appeared is a minor change in the uh, condominium uh, decision making and a more important change, but Professor Veresh mentioned already, in the protection of, uh, of majors having impaired uh, uh, capacity. So uh, I think that uh, all this being said, sorry for taking uh, too long with the history part. Um, after listening to almost all the uh, presentations, I think we are on the same page. We are all saying the same things, but with our uh, national experience in mind. But I am seeing that we all have similar problems, we are finding similar types of solution, and we are ending up with similar concepts, whether we are starting from a German model, from a French model, or like in the case of the uh, Romanian civil code on a uh, Quebec uh, uh, code model. Thank you.